Hi everybody. Um, welcome back to Say College Kuala Lumpur's social media. So I bet all of you guys are watching this on YouTube and on Facebook. Hi guys, please leave your comments down below telling me that you guys are here. Good afternoon. Have you guys had a great lunch? How is your lunch? What do you guys have? All right. Okay, how is the MCO treating all of you? Hello, please do remember to share the this live with your friends and family. All right. So today we'll be talking about the School of Creative Arts and Design and at the same time uh, mass communication as well. All right. So let's give our audiences about one or two minutes to come on in to join us in this live stream. All right. Hello, everybody who's watching. <clears throat> Do share this with friends and family as well. Okay. So, hi, everybody. My name is Eileen. I'm the digital marketing executive from Segi College Kuala Lumpur and also the alumni of Segi College Kuala Lumpur in the American Degree Program. So, today I'll be your host again for this today's virtual open day. <clears throat> okay. So, why are we having uh, this virtual open day? I think I've explained it on um, the past three virtual open days that we have. It's because that we want all our students and potential students to stay at home, uh, family, par families and parents as well. All right. Even though it's CMCO, we still want everybody to stay safe, stay at home and being able to enjoy and get most of the information um, right at the comforts of your own home. Hi, Mr. Sasi. Hi, good afternoon. Hi, Logish. <clears throat> OK, so please do remember to share this stream out to your friends and family. All right. So today, like I said, we'll be introducing the School of Creative Arts and Design and also Mass Communication. So if your friends and family or, you know, anybody who just finished their SPM or finished their foundation or finished their um, Form 6 or IGCSC or IB program and are interested in joining Creative Arts and Design, um, you like designing, you like creative arts, you like graphic designing, you like multimedia design, and at the same time, you also like mass communication, please come and join our stream. We have a panel of academicians and also our Deputy Principal of City College Kuala Lumpur will be joining us today in this live stream. And we will be able to answer all of your questions and if you have any concerns pertaining any subjects or any um, questions about creative arts and design, what is the job prospect and what you should do the next step, you know, you can ask us down in the comment section down below. All right. So thank you guys for joining us in our virtual open day. All right. So yet once again, why are we doing this virtual open day is so that every one of you, friends or family, prospect students or current students are able to enjoy um, the information from City College Kuala Lumpur at your comforts of your own home or even anywhere you are right now in Malaysia or even overseas as well. All right, so thank you so much for joining us. Okay, so without further ado, I would like to introduce uh, our Deputy Principal of City College Kuala Lumpur, uh, Mr. Tan Chumpang, and also our Head of uh, Engineering and Computing Science and also in charge of the School of Creative Arts and Design, Mr. David Fu. And also our academic staff, um, Mr. Tujan, Ms. Devagi, and Ms. Molly. So Mr. Tujan, he is in charge of um, the graphic designs, a part of the creative arts and design. And Ms. Devagi is in charge of the multimedia aspects of the creative arts and design school. And also Ms. Molly, she's in charge of the mass communication from the creative arts and design school. So welcome our panel of guests and say hi to our stream. Say hi to our audiences who are watching right now. Hi. Okay, Hi. so I would like once again to thank our academicians for taking this time, um, precious time out of their classes as well. I understand that they are teaching right now. So don't worry, yes, all our academic staffs are teaching right now. If some of you are wondering, they are always hustling and bustling, trying to uh, find out the best way to teach. And so if you would like to know how creative arts and design are being taught online during the CMCO, Stay tuned as we, our academic staff have prepared a short video to show you how it is taught. So without further ado, I'd like to pass this time to Mr. Tang to introduce a little bit more about our college at the same time and introduce our virtual open day. Mr. Tang, the floor is yours. 
Okay, thanks, Eileen. Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our Segi College Kuala Lumpur Virtual Open Day. Thank you for taking uh, your precious time, part of your uh, very precious time to spend uh, this time with us. Uh, we have a lot of things to share with you. Okay, and uh, most important during this time, we, I hope that you're all in the pink of health. Health is so very important. I think everybody realizes even more this time of MCO and CMCO, right? And um, even though health is uh, so very important, uh, but we cannot uh, neglect education, right? I'm sure you agree with us that education is uh, so important for us to, um, for, our, for our career, for our income, right? We seem to consider education the long term, in the short term, right? So, um, yeah. I'd like to share with you um, a bit about Segi College Kuala Lumpur. Uh, do you know that Segi College Kuala Lumpur has been in existence since 1977? Yes, you've been in uh, this education industry for more than 40 old years, right? And this means that we are a very, very established um, education provider. And we are one of the largest education, private education providers in Malaysia, right? With more than uh, 15,000 active students <clears throat> and uh, today we are so glad to share with you a little bit about our school of uh, creative arts and design and you have got you may have a lot of questions to ask or maybe a few one or two questions to ask feel free right to post your questions to us and we'll be glad to uh, answer them but maybe you don't know how students can uh, can learn how do how do we uh, teach students during this uh, mco period or cmco period what programs are available right in this uh, this school what sort of student experience can you expect if you study these programs in Segi college what career options are available to you when you graduate and maybe uh you may be interested in scholarships right what scholarships are available especially in this time of uh, cmco mco um some may be in uh, facing financial difficulties and uh, how we can uh, help you to even study during this time uh, when you're facing financial difficulties. We have a lot of things to share with you. So please stay tuned, right? Stay tuned. And uh, and maybe I'd like to talk right now to pass the time to uh, Mr. David, our head of uh, Creative Arts and Design, to share a little bit about the programs available. David, over to you. Yeah, <laughs> thanks a lot, uh, uh, Tang. Uh, well, I'm Dave Fu, right? I'm the, actually heading the, uh, uh, the School of uh, Com Communication and uh, Creative Art Design. And uh, well, we, we do offer uh, courses that is relevant uh, to the industry and uh, in, you know, in, in the era of high industry 4.0. Uh, they are the courses or programs that we offer are a diploma in uh, uh, graphic design, Okay, diploma in uh, multimedia design, and as well as a diploma in mass uh, mass communication. Um, well, over the years we have uh, run these programs uh, with a number of graduates uh, uh, graduated um, with uh, uh, good uh, uh, results, and they have actually placed in many reputable uh, companies. So, um, well. Um, what this session will um, rather uh, give you some info uh, by sharing uh, with, with sharing from uh, lecturers uh, later on, right? To to introduce to you all these programs and what are the uh, what can you learn, all right? From uh, when you when you enroll in these uh, programs. Over to you, Ellie. All right. Okay. Thank you, Mr. David. Sorry, I'm having some issues here. All right. Okay. So that's it. Okay. So I know I understand that a lot of um, you in the audiences would like to know how is our classes has been conducted. You know, how, how would you, you know, from me, maybe you can get it from me. If you ask me how is the classes being conducted, I can just give you a very vague uh, answer. You know, you will not uh, believe me in a sense, but I think you will believe it 
if it comes from our academic staff themselves because they are the ones who actually um, come up with lesson plans. They have to um, make sure that all the syllabus are being covered so that all our students are able to go through with their final exam. So the first question would be, what is the difference between online versus face-to-face -face classes? Are they effective? because we do know creative arts and design sometimes you just need to be there to learn because a lot of softwares are being uh, presented to you in front face to face right, and you need to practice it all right so the best way is to ask our academic staff so maybe let's ask uh, for online and face to face class i think this is very um is, is a concern for especially for multimedia design and also graphic design because we have um you have softwares to use, and how is it different between online studies and face-to-face -face study? Mr. Tujan and Mr. Teva, uh, Ms. Devagi, would you like to answer that for us? All right, thank you, Elin. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you for having us here. So um, let me first of all explain what is the difference between online education and also face-to-face. -face. All right, uh, when we look at online, basically, Online and face-to-face -face are two different types of learning. Uh, both actually has these uh, high quality learning and of course they have their own teaching methods. And of course they establish its own channels and guidelines for learning. But when you look at online education, it uses the main, main um, popular method at the moment, which is internet and information and also of course communications technology uh, where it pro uh, provides students with tools like chats, blogs, video conferences, and chat documents. Uh, this will basically enable students to attend classes, uh, work, communicate, and of course, can access content whenever they may be. Uh, another aspect of this uh, online learning is that it stimulates students' independence and curiosity, collaborative work, critical thinking, and self-directed learning. So this system also diversifies sources of knowledge. But when you look at classroom-based learning, students go to physical classroom where the teaching and much of learning takes places. With this method, the student takes more passive role and adapt to the teacher's rhythm and teaching more. So basically, the teacher is the primary source of information. So um, if we want to look at the effective way of, of online education, classroom-based or face-to-face, I think I'll pass it to Ms. Dewiki. Ms. Dewiki would explain it uh, even in detail. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Devagi, she's on mute. Maybe you can unmute um, yourself first, Ms. Devagi, and then you can speak to us. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ile, Alin, and Dr. Jun. Uh, when we talk about in terms of effectiveness in online teaching, okay, there is a fair amount on uh, instruction design issues. The organization of uh, best web-based online uh, teaching is very important. It usually requires a, a considerable uh, amount of time to design and develop an online class. In fact, if instructors are expected to uh, acquire skills such as instructional designer, graphic artist, webmaster, etc., uh, to tell the truth, it may take many months or more. Uh, the instructor must look at the course in a new way when adapting uh, traditionally delivered courses to the web. You see, in many cases, the more comfortable the instructor, I'm saying the lecturer, okay, instructor or lecturer, be the teacher, is in teaching in a traditional setting, the more difficult it is to face the reality that significant uh, rethinking and adaptation will be required for uh, effective distant course delivery. Uh, in, um, see, when it comes to the online teaching, teaching class learning, both students and uh, lecturers need to start up time to adapt uh, to the logistic of the online course or uh, online teaching environment. Therefore, the, uh, the lecturer should factor that into the design of the course by providing warm exercises. Uh, for an example, uh, uh, should organize modules of a fixed time duration or um, uh, for example, probably uh, in one or two weeks so that students move through the course together and this can um, uh, communicate about and help each other with the same issues. Um, at the same time, um, um, you see, there, be, uh, there should be uh, a number of uh, small assignments uh, through which the 
the in the I mean the lecturer provides feedback. So similarly, the evaluation component in uh, online uh, courses must be ongoing and um, uh, continual. Uh, in fairness to the students who may not have as much immediate feedback as in face-to-face -face classes. Yes, Mr. Tang, will you have to add something to this? Uh, yes, I'd like to ask um, uh, Tunjan and Tevagi. Okay, this is what I heard like, right, from uh, some of the online classes, is that uh, the, some of the quieter students during face-to-face -face, uh, sessions, uh, they tend to participate more during online classes, right? Very true. Uh, do you find that to be the, the case? Yes, very true. Uh, I do find students uh, who are actually even more quiet and they are very less um, participating during the face-to-face -face in class. They, when they are using Blackboard, uh, which is the main uh, source of our e-learning uh, in Segi College, um, they are even more uh, active by uh, online, uh, and their their participation is even more uh, effective. Okay, so this means to say that uh, online has this advantage of catering for both the maybe the extroverted people who are more yes. participating during uh, face to face, and also into the intro more introverted people for online. Would you say that is it? Uh, you know, it uh, caters for both. Very true. It caters for both, basically. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Back to you, Aden. Mr. David, would you Sorry. like to add something as well? No, no, it's uh, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, yes, Mr. Bagi. Uh, the, the instructor um, should combat uh, student feelings of isolation by uh, designing and providing a supportive and interactive environment uh, where the students can easily air their problems and get help uh, and solution from the instructor, staff or other students. So uh, in this case, um, all the parties are uh, giving their uh, contribution. Okay, so uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, very good that we have point uh, the points that you have uh, mentioned just now. So, how uh, maybe we want to share how, how do you relate, uh, you know, what you said just now to the classes that you're, you're, you're teaching? Yes. Uh, Mr. David, are you directing the question to me? Uh, yes, yes, there will be. Yeah. Uh, uh, could you please repeat? Yeah, no. um, you, you, you have mentioned uh, you know a lot of uh, concept concept uh, about uh, online and what uh, online should be uh, doing and and uh, what uh, you know the the, the, the lecturers should, uh, should you know should be doing uh, during online session and so on so maybe you you, you may want to share how you relate uh, uh, that uh, that kind of concept to to your field of teaching the, the your yeah, the, yeah the, the concept that you are the, you know apply how do you apply it uh, to the classes that you are teaching okay, you're, you're now, on... yeah right now you are teaching online right yeah some of your classes yes. you're online, right yes. so how do you apply that uh, what you have mentioned just now okay uh you see, you see the amount of, and the quality of interaction between the instructor and students is important as it is the amount of interaction between students uh, uh, the instructor can use, um, uh, for example, I am using uh, online discussions and uh, shared documents to create a communication environment. Apart from the uh, discussions, I am using um, a Zoom app, Skype app, and a Discord app in order to conduct my online classes. And I am making sure that um, my, uh, but I, I'm, uh, I, I can't, I can't hundred. 100% be sure that all my students are attending to my classes. Uh, I'm very sad to say that uh, some of the students are having uh, uh, um, connection problems. So, so they they uh, they will not be able to join my classes. But I'm still giving my uh, continued support to my students by uploading my uh, my videos. I would just record my videos and after I convert it into a video format, I would upload in, a, in our learning platform, which is called as a Blackboard. I would upload my videos and those those are, uh, those are the students who are not, who are not able to join my classes. They would just uh, refer to my videos 
and uh, would do all the exercises that I have instructed them to do. And um, so far, uh, uh, my students have uh, uh, done their excellent job. I think so, that um, sums us up very, very great because we do understand that even though um, CMCO or before CMCO was MCO, uh, everybody's having internet issues. Why? Everybody's staying at home. Everybody's using the internet. Everybody's Netflixing. Everybody's downloading. You know, all these kind of things that is unavoidable, especially when it comes to rain and weather-wise, it will disrupt the connection. So I think things like this, our academic staff is already well prepared. They understand students' um, situations. They will prepare the best um, course of study for them. For example, videos or even um, recorded sessions. After I think after the recorded session, if the students were to have any questions, they would just text the lecturer and say, "Oh, Miss, you did say this um, in your video. Uh, would you uh, can can you explain a little bit more? Because I really do not understand." And our academic staff would be so more than happy to help them because they 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 feel happy as well. I think because they say that oh, I made this video and my student actually watched it, and then they actually ask me questions about it. They will be even happier to answer your questions. All right. So as students, you do not have to worry if uh, during CMCO. You're not able to come to class, but our lecturers is always there for you. They will be able to help you and be able to guide you. And they are not just helping you in terms of academically, but also if you need support in terms of um, emotion-wise or you are facing very dif uh, difficult situation, our lecturers are always there to help you. They are always there to advise you and co uh, consult you as well. And then we do have an internal um internal counsellors to help you through situations as well. So don't worry about that, all right? So let's dabble into a little bit more on the industry. So as you guys know, Segi has moved on to the IR 4.0 uh, route and also we are accepting digital transformation. So how do we prepare students to be industry rev ready and for uh, to be more detailed to be IR 4.0 ready. So uh, why not Miss Molly and Ms. Da uh, Mr. David, uh, you can tell us a little bit more about this because we do know that communication in terms of um, digital transformation, how do we communicate effectively, you know, through digital platforms? You know, sometimes miscommunications can happen through our digital platforms. Or how do we, you know, address this? The floor is yours, Miss Molly and Mr. David. All right, for mass communication, all right, first of all, my students, right, they are on-site journalists right now, okay? In a while, Eli will show one of the video over here, all right? So on-site journalists is more to digitalize, and my students, or, I mean, my SCAM students, they are starting to do upload news article, all right, as a journalist reporter, they are uploading news in the social media, especially Facebook. All right, they are moving towards to the IR4, and some of them are in a digital marketing. All right, they conducted event and also advertised the events uh, information in the social media for a moment. All right, so right now, my students, especially in the mass communication, they are moving towards to the IR4. As you can see in a while, there is a few videos, all right, which is uh. There are coursework which is related to the IR4, and all of our students are more to digitalize right now. Okay, as you can see here, this is one of the events that we conducted earlier this year with the speakers um, from the industry expert, especially Ali Iskandar and Prita Maniwanan. Both of them are from the industrial line. One is from TV3 and Astro Awani. All right, we move on. And then our students also went for the, okay, this is the video, all right? As you can see, this is an on-site video. First of all, this video.
so students right now are more to digitalize okay so no more reading uh, printer newspaper they are more into the e-newspaper right now all right mr david do you want to add anything yeah um it's good to see you know those videos that is uh presented just now uh, well, uh, this is one one of the way that uh, uh, you know the, the school is, is going to uh, towards this uh, industry 4.0 uh, ready. Uh, you know, for the, the students uh, need to you know in this era there's no choice uh, but uh, you know students need to it, there's no escape. You know, the students need to actually uh, move on and and, and learn uh, the many ways of. Uh, um, you know, uh, learning how to adapt to technology and uh, use technology uh, in this era, in Industry 4.0 era. Um, uh, to, to add up to what uh, uh, Ms. Tan Molly has uh, uh, shown just now, um, you know, one of the pillars of IR 4.0 is the um, uh, 3D printing, right? Uh, I'm sure all of you have heard before, right, 3D printing. Uh, 3D printing is the use of a you know a printer uh, called a 3D printer to print out uh, you know three three dimension kind of object okay uh, using uh, technology so um, so 3D printing is one of the subjects that uh, one of the subject in uh, uh, in the diploma all right diploma in uh, graphic design uh, you know to teach students on how to uh, uh, use 3D printer to to print. Right, objects. So we are actually collaborating with uh, uh, some of the uh, industry players, right? Industry uh, to you know to collaborate with them to see how we can uh, uh, incorporate the three uh, D printing uh, courses, right? Uh, their syllabus into our uh, our curriculum. So this is one of the way that we are actually uh trying to do for the students for the benefit of the students all right in order for them to uh to be exposed all right to all this uh, ir uh, industry 4.0 figures so that is one example of uh that uh, how we actually collaborate with the uh with the industry there are many other uh courses that uh, in the pipeline right where we actually collaborate with the industry uh, and uh, we will um, it is going to be scheduled very soon to arrange for classes. Um, and uh, during this period of time, during the MCO, uh, we are trying to arrange for uh, online training, okay, uh, for, uh, for for students and and to the public as well. Elin? Yeah, I think that is great. Since that uh, we have talked a little bit about how we. Um, get our students ready for IR 4.0 at the same time, why not we dabble into a little bit more about our diplomas, uh, what can we expect from them since that we have all our academic staff here from each faculty, they are here representing the each faculty to be able to answer all these questions. Why not we have, um, let's talk a little bit first about multimedia design, all right? So what is multimedia design? Does our students really learn animation? Because we do know that when people think about multimedia designs, they think about a lot of other schools. Like they always, the first thing you come to multimedia design, they always say animation, all right? Videos, things like Disney cartoons, all right? And moving pictures, moving animation, Minecrafts, um, things like Animal Crossing, you know, those kind of game graphics. This is what they think of, first of all. So, Segi has, honestly, Segi has not shown, like, uh, when people think of Segi, they never thought about, oh, they have multimedia design. But yes, we do. And Miss Devagi here is about to teach us. And that day, if you guys have missed out, I think you guys have missed this out, you know, if, if you guys have not seen it. We actually have people from Tune, uh, Tune Boom coming up um, as a webinar. They tell us about all this animation. And Malaysian made like the Mickey Mouse version, uh, the Malaysian Mickey Mouse version little animation that they showed and it was amazing. You guys should have joined us the other day. But let us just uh, give this time to Mr. Ragi. Maybe can she can explain to us what is animation and what is uh, VFX and what is it all about? Okay. Uh, okay, see, uh, as a child, as a child, I'm, I'm just uh, directing this question to the uh, 
probably to the 70s to the 80s kids because I uh, grown up watching the cartoons such as DuckTales and a He-Man as a child. Uh, see, then you are, if you know, if you have watched DuckTales and He-Man as a child, then you already know what I am talking about, about animation. Uh, you see, basically, uh, it is a technique of art um, which causes picture or images to look like they are moving. Okay, but before I am um, explaining further, let me uh, uh, give you the difference between two D and three uh, D animation. See, two D animation is uh, created by drawing, drawing. Okay, almost uh, every frame of the um, animated movie, and it, uh, uh, it is the base of a uh, three D animation. And uh, uh, 3D animation is created by uh, uh, changing the poses, poses and, uh, and of course, the placement of already created the 3D models. So it has more uh, depth and um, obviously is more realistic. Uh, precisely to be said, uh, it is a series of images or uh, objects uh, created using computers or uh, any other digital media. So you see, uh, the animation industry in Malaysia and internationally, uh, in fact, is very huge and growing. Uh, there is a big market for animated films, um, uh, advertising campaigns, uh, educational series, websites uh, with animation, uh, and etc. Uh, we're talking about a VFX, okay? VFX, which uh, VFX is actually a short form to the uh, visual effects. Okay, visual effects are a way of mixing real film shooting with false or animated images. Okay, let me just give you one example. Um, uh, you have watched many CG movies, okay? Uh, if I tell you CG, computer graphics movies, you should know one of the examples of CG movies are Avatars. Yeah, exactly. Okay, Avatar, Transformers, and um, I, I mean, uh, we are, I mean, most of us are movie freak. Am I not? Am, am I correct? Right. Yes, yes, okay. definitely. So, uh, just give you one one simple example. Okay, a movie that shows the hero jumping off the ground and uh, flying into the air is created using VFX. Almost uh, every single movie these days, I'm saying these days are using VFX. Yes. Exactly, Mr. Wagi. I, I, I totally agree. Without those visual effects, nobody would enjoy the movie. Nobody would like to see Tom Cruise die in Mission Impossible. So he always land on something. He'll jump off far from a place and he just land on something soft. Right? Exactly. And they are yeah. using the green they are using the green screen effects. Yes, exactly. So and as any control, we have that as well. We have yeah. green screen. So that is amazing. Can you see the difference? You know, without all this, you can't see. And then the most famous one. Do you know that Upin in Ipin has gone famous internationally? Yeah. Upin and Ipin is international right now. And mm. things like Baby Shark, you know that baby shark thing? Yeah. Uh, even that is um multimedia design, it comes from that. If you want to create arts like that and you have um the passion for it, you know, tell a story through pictures because creative arts and design basically is like a storytelling platform. All right. You tell your story through your uh graphics, you tell your story through the animation, and you tell your story through communications. All right, different types of um terms and also different types of a ways to transport your message to another person okay so now basically i have already dabbled a little bit on um, communication so why not we talk a little bit more about mass communication since um like i said before i've introduced myself as the alumni of city college Guangpo. my lecturer who has taught me in my uh, communications class is down here miss molly she's here so she can uh, help us understand a little bit more about mass com all right so miss molly what does MassCom have in the future in today's society, especially with CMCO and with MCO and this uh, COVID pandemic happen happening? How do we see the future of MassCom? All right. Right now, we are live streaming. Am I right? Yes. This is the future of mass communication. Before this, we are more to face-to-face. -to -face. All right. Now, we are into live stream. Okay. We might and we can and we are doing a live telecast with uh, now publics, unknown publics, pu known publics, and also we lecturers are tend to do online classes too via using audio and also video. Okay, that is the future of mass communication. Last time, people who have created an online news through, okay, created a printed news, all right, mm -hmm. now they are more online news. 
All right, no more printing out newspaper. Now they are creating online news and also published it through e Berita Harian, online Berita Harian, online NST, and so on. So whatever information you want to get, it's through everything online. That is the future of mass communication. If you ask me about public relations, all right? The main tool for a public relation is the press release, okay? So last time, press release has have to be emailed. Now you go to their websites, AHA websites, even Segi's websites, we have a press release at one column over there. So whatever information about Segi, you can get it through the press release. So everything is in the digitalized for us, mass communications. It's mass communication is exchanging information to a large audiences through the online media, online platform. Right now we are using this platform, which is FB Live and also YouTube Live. So this is the platform we are using to reach more people, not one or two, not only 10 people, but more than that, 100 and more than that. Okay, that is the future of mass form right now. Okay, uh, one more question, Ms. Molly. I think a lot of people have this um, tendency, this stereotype of mass comm students. They always say that after SPM, they say that, oh, you're pretty and you know how to talk. You're handsome, you know how to talk. Just go study mass comm. You know, that kind of misconception, yeah. that kind of stereotypical, you know. You know and all our lecturers are laughing because I know that you, you heard this as well. So what is your take on this? Okay, I think MESCOM, every, everyone thinks that it's in front of the camera. No, not at all, okay? It is behind the camera, left side, and also right side of the camera, all right? In front of the camera is one of them, all right? As a newcaster or a journalist standing in front of the camera, presenting news to us. But behind of the camera, there are many of them who are working hard for the people in front of the camera. Yes. All right? Yeah, we have to break that stereotype. Yeah, I, I know because a lot of people just see the front, they don't see the back. So they think like, oh, okay, yeah. you're a mass comm student, whoever's in front of the camera, that is what you're doing. You know, so, you know, you know, yeah. you know, it's uh, Mr. to add on, you know, when yeah. uh, after a, a show, right, a film, when you, when you watch a, a, a show, right, uh, the end credit, right, you yes. can see a lot of, uh, you know, people, uh, credit, you don't know, the names are displayed on the screen. So you know the, the number of one is for Transformers. Example, those, uh, Marvel, uh, yeah, Transformers or even even those Marvel movies, uh, right? Yes. Uh, you can see that the, the numbers of a uh, few hundreds of uh, people involved in that in that kind of that kind of uh, show. So you yes. can imagine. Yeah. Yes, I can imagine, especially for their graphic design team or animation team, they could go up to hundred packs. At one time, yeah. you know, one production uh, requires thousands and thousands of people. So you guys heard it first. It's not just the person in front of the camera that is doing the job. Uh, then you think that they are the best comm students. Yeah. It's just yeah. not the actors alone. Yes. Yeah, yeah. The directors yeah. are also mass yeah. comm students. Yeah, they're yeah, just you know, behind China, the scenes. So uh, what's his name again? The famous director, Spielberg. I think Spielberg oh. is also one of the things that are from mass comp. You can go in uh, directing shows and directing plays. You know those kind of plays like uh, Wicked, um, the musical play. I'm not too sure whether you guys are familiar with Wicked, but Wicked is like my favorite musical theater ever. So we, we even being uh, on the production of Wicked, you need people from mass comp. All right. It's not just about old media or new media. New media is what Miss Molly has mentioned earlier, which is what we are doing live streaming. Uh, we are doing uh, digital news and all those are new media. The old media are the very um, the very old school and the newspapers, the radios and all that. All right. Okay. I understand not many of you, I think not all of you, unless it is needed. You don't listen to radio anymore unless it's in your car. Correct or not? Correct. Yeah, yeah, I agree. <laughs> Nobody listens to radio anymore. Well, what is radio now? Yeah, right. Everybody on the road, everybody's like tucking in their earphones, but I can guarantee you none of them are on radio. Everybody's on Spotify or on Jukes. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, I Spotify. Yes. Yeah. Those are new media. So basically, those are things that it has been communicated to us, you know. You, you hear uh, advertisements um, on on uh, Spotify. You have advertisements on Spotify. Imagine that. Deeper, yeah. deeper, you have Shopee advertisements on Spotify <laughs> for some reason, for some odd reason. 
So that is a new way of people are communicating. So like I said earlier, we need a whole team of graphic designers to come out um, for a Transformers movie. Okay, people always think that uh, graphic designers work alone. All right, they are just there in their studio, one person in front of a camera with their mouse, with their extended monitors, and their their fancy schmancy uh, MacBook Pros and their iMacs and all that fancy stuff. And Mr. Tujan is smiling because basically this is the nature of his job. So, <laughs> Mr. Tujan, I have some questions for you. How do you think the future of graphic designer uh, would be like after this MCO? And what are the strengths? that one should possess uh, possessed when they are working as a graphic designer or they want to work as a graphic designer for me it's right. one word stressful <laughs> okay uh, let me tell you one thing about graphic designers their job has never been easy uh, no. because you know um the thing is graphic designers are problem solvers has always been problem solvers when it comes to uh, giving the demand, you know, fulfilling the demand, especially when it comes to design. I fully right. understand that. <laughs> so then that's where the problem will actually increase because, you know, there, there are people who will, everybody's a critic. There, there are people who want to change this and change that. But then uh, that's how uh, we evolve, basically, because we tend to see things that is already digitalized and then we are influenced by it and then we tend to demand to get, you know, uh, what we see, basically. So designers have to, to to say about future, when it comes to designers, I can't uh, predict future, to be honest. <laughs> Nobody can. <laughs> All right. But then uh, if they possess this discipline about being patient and also, uh, you know, persistent. Being, uh, persistence, that's a very good word. Perseverance mm -hmm. is actually also the, a very good word. You know, it's like you're running a boulder from the bottom of the mountain to the top of the mountain and it yes. gets heavier and heavier. So yes. um, designers have to be, you know, prepared for that. That's yes. why um, digital transformation is nothing when, when it comes to graphic designers. They have to be, they have to be prepared. They have to be ready. Uh, when we talk about tablet, there's a lot of people uh, misunderstood about tablet when there's actually a drawing tablet. There's so many mm -hmm. kinds of drawing tablet. And when we say Wacom, uh, then only they know, oh, that, that is one type of drawing tablet. All right? Mm -hmm. But then there's a lot of it, basically. Even your smartphone can be converted into your drawing tablet if you sync it properly to your uh, laptop. So basically, that's already a, another advancement of digital transformation when it comes to graphic designers. So uh, to look at to look at their future, they have they will have a solid future if they expand more. You know, not only dabble in one uh, sector, they actually have to branch out their their talent. You know, they have to go into IT, they have to go into communication, they have to go into multimedia. They have to expand their skills. That's how uh, basically uh, graphic designers evolve. You know, looking at a little amoeba and how an amoeba evolves into a, you know, a, a, a bigger microorganism. So it's something like that. All right. And then also when you look at the largest uh, strength, the biggest strength a uh, designer should have is basically their yeah, creative spirit. That should yes. not die. That should not like literally bury. You yes. know, they, have, they should not like literally keep it in their baggage and then, then uh, you know, keep it at the back garage and then just forget about creativity. So creativity comes uh, in a way that they think of another alternative way. Yes. As an example now, uh, when it comes to online education, when the student has problem with uh, communication uh, through, you know, network. So yes. how do we find another source of, uh, you know, solution to give the student another okay. way? Yeah, exactly. So that's what Ms. Dewiki has been mentioning uh, earlier. So we have to also um, have the ability to understand the desire. That's all. You know, human is actually greedy and it's yes. not always enough. So uh, we as nature, uh, when it comes to technology, we want it to become even more advanced and we want ourselves, our knowledge to be more advanced. So we basically are self-learners to tell you the truth. 
Yes. I think yes. for graphic designers, we learn every single day. It's like yeah, everything's ever evolving. When you see a different combination of colors, you'll be like, I've never seen such a weird combination of colors and actually work, you know? In the law of like pantones, I have learned, I've gone through so far, I've never known these pantones actually work together, but they actually do work together. So why not, you know? People always think those avo green and brown should not work together because it, it seems like it's just a fruit and very muddy and it reminds reminds you of grass and dirt but then sure. if when you see a lot of avocado prints everywhere and avocado green everywhere and people are not having that mindset of uh, being it dirty or being it just like a, a blob of nature not everybody yeah. think that it's cool it's fun you know those yeah. kind of things this is how graphic designers change your mind the way they perceive it the way they display things for you it's totally different. It will make you change your uh, perspective on different views of life. Correct? Please do correct me if I'm wrong. Steve. Very true. Very true. We call this yeah. visual analysis or visual communication, yes. how we analyze and how we communicate to our audience. So mm -hmm. we use colors. Colors are basically are the largest psychological uh, psychological aspects when it comes to visual. So yes. uh, it's very important. It's very true when you mention about avocado because there is now avocado uh, furniture, you know? kitchen yes. furniture that is actually at the color of avocado you know it's yes. it has a special range of colors for that yep. yes exactly people never really like green i can I, I can bet my bottom i can bet my my million dollars if i have it you know that 10 years ago avocado green is not a popular color like people will see nope. it as, eh, so green so not nice it's like nature and grass you know the but same that's, thing. Sorry, the same thing how they say uh, the grey is the new black right now. So yes, exactly. Yeah. Last time, like a few years back, it was like yellow was the new black or orange was the new black because of that show. <laughs> the TV show on Netflix, orange is the new black. <laughs> <laughs> Right? right we have so many things that's ever changing this is how creative arts and design how it is communicated do you see guys audiences all these questions i've uh, put uh, have put out and all our the answers have been given by our lecturers actually make sense you need creative arts you need communications you need graphic animations as well if not your life would be such a blam to be very honest imagine a day without color Imagine a day without talking to people. Imagine a day without news. Imagine a day without cartoons and Tom and Jerry. I know everybody um, is very familiar with Tom and Jerry. You always wonder why Jerry never dies and Tom never dies. <laughs> he's burned like a few seconds ago and he, he's like full of fur the very next second. So how did that happen? As we know, if we shave our head, it will take us months and months to grow it back. But for Tom and Jerry, it's just one second. And they are back. They are okay all over again. Right? Isn't that? You can see it actually correlates. Graphic design communicates through artworks, through the information of a piece of artwork. Animation uh, communicates through the story that is moving. If you watch shows like uh, Pingu, is it Pingu? I think there's a penguin show called Pingu. There's no voice. There's no audio. It's like pe, 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 all that all the time, right? But there's a story and you understand it. Can you see such a wonderful success of an animation right there? You understand the story without, without it saying a single word. It's just sounds coming out. And communications. I, right, correct. I can, give, right? I can give a similar movie. For example, Minion. Yes. Uh, who does not like Minion movie? It's captivating. It's using all kinds of languages from all over the world. Exactly. And people still understand what do they want, what the minions want, and the Gru guy understand what his minions want. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like a whole different alien language, right? And also for mass comp, without all this visual animation, without a personnel, okay? Okay, these days, TikTokers are so famous. YouTubers are so famous, Instagrammers are so famous, they do not need to work a single day, but obviously they work behind the scene. Like what Miss Molly said, you know, you don't see what they're doing behind the scene, you know. You only see the front image, they're posing, they're making nice YouTube videos, but you don't know the hours of editing the video, hours of setting up a studio, a uh, studio ready platform for them to film. You don't know, these are all communication to send out one message to another person and in between, there are a lot of noises. Uh, Miss Molly is so proud right now because I'm actually telling all the things that I remember from her class. <laughs> all, 
all the noises come in, all the disruptions comes in. Now people will perceive differently, but then the message is still being sent there. All right, it's about uh, channeling out a message to your audiences, like what we are doing right now. All right, so it's been 50 minutes off the stream okay i know everybody's a bit tired and what's a virtual open day without a virtual campus tour so let's take a little break and let me show you guys a little bit of our campus virtually because you guys should not come here because it's cmto you still should not move you know colleges are not not supposed to be opened but we're bringing this right to your doorstep so sit back down and enjoy this one minute video So I guess all of you guys have seen that. That is a wonderful, have you seen our Mac Labs? Have you seen the scene of our Mac Labs? It's so awesome. Yeah, if you if you join the class, Miss Devagi's classes or Mr. Tujan's class, you, you, for sure, 100%, I guarantee you, you will enter that particular class, right? For sure, you, you'll be learning. Mr. Tujan is using Mac every day, so he is a pro at it. Can you see what I just did there? Maybe I'm just embarrassing myself, you know, a pro there. MacBook Pros. Okay, maybe I'm embarrassing myself. <laughs> it's okay. It's for your entertainment purposes. All right. Okay, so you can see a little bit of the Mac session. It's actually a live class session that Miss Devagi was um, conducting the other day. I think Miss Devagi, you remember, right? We were filming in. I like sort of interrupted your class a little bit and came in and said that maybe we can film something. Yeah. So our students actually use that. It's not um, a lot of colleges out there. I do see that they promote their Mac Labs, but a lot of students' feedback to us is that they are not allowed to use the Mac Labs, but our students over here, they are allowed, they are 100% allowed to use the Mac Labs, especially uh, we actually prioritize it for the creative arts and design student because they need it more than um, other students. For example, I don't think it's necessarily um, use of, uh, necessary for the business school students to use a Mac yet. Because I, you can just use a Windows laptop or Windows computer to go on um, Excel or Microsoft, you know. But certain programs like um, Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop, um, iMovie, or what, what's that called? A uh, producer? Uh, not a producer. What is that called? Mr. Tuja, what is the other one called, Lee? Besides iMovie? You mean Final Cut Pro? Yes, Final Cut Pro, yes. All those things are very... Uh, very um, specific on certain softwares, all right? So that's why we prioritize it for our creative arts and design students, all right? So let's move on to a next question. Okay, so I think this is a good question. Let's see. Ah, what career options are available to grads from the School of Creative Arts and Design? Just communication um, for any uh, graphic design or even multimedia design as well. So lecturers, would you like to share a little bit about your students who have graduated, what they are doing or uh, what kind of career options do they have? Because a lot of people think that mass comm students can only be comp peers, okay? Uh, graphic designers can only be graphic designers. Multimedia uh, design students can only become multimedia designers. I know that's a stereotype that we want to uh, let out and they are just more than that. The floor is yours, Miss Molly, Miss Devagi and Mr. Tujan. Ladies first. All right. 
Okay. Promise comes. Okay. Let me start first. Okay. Sorry, guys. Promise comes. You can be a content writer. All right. One of our students uh, right now is working as a content writer in the world bus. Right. She's working from home, and there are one or two articles she sent it over to me, and she's doing good, and I'm proud of her too. All right. And then you can be a PR practitioner. Not only in a company, you can be you can be a PR practitioner for a politicians, okay, politicians, and also for some you know like a uh, companies, all right, politicians, companies like uh, any. Okay, there is a student, all right, my student work as a PR for a politician, opposition party moment. Okay, she, he works for a three or four months and then he quit. Okay, it's a very good experience. And then uh, event manager, okay, and then short film director, that is the career prospects. All right, YouTuber, as Eileen mentioned earlier, okay, YouTuber, in front of the camera, you might think that it's very easy to flow out with everything, but behind, they work out, they really work hard for the scripts and everything, all right, editing too. And you can be a freelancer as in a new pastor, New write news writer and whatever for all right as a freelancer that is the most of the career prospects that's available in mass communications and um, I think maybe graphic design they have something related to mass com too okay okay Mr. Tujan, something related to mass uh, graphic design all right okay when we speak about uh, the interrelation between graphic design and communication I actually do agree with Miss um, Basically, you know, as I uh, mentioned earlier, graphic designers, they have to involve, you know. So we do have students who are currently doing graphic communication, where they literally relate themselves into uh, something that is communicating through visual. They are in charge of, uh, you know, the industry where they make sure they follow the scope of visual communication. Um, that is if we relate communication and graphic designer together, all right? Uh, but if we want to talk solely on graphic design, uh, it actually starts very basic first. You know, we start with graphic arts um, tech. You know, we always call them uh, tech because they're always the technical part. Like, I got, as an example, where they used to do uh, use Illustrator to trace, uh, use Photoshop to crop photos, uh, those, are, those are the a uh, technical graphic artist, or we call it the graphic designer assistant right now. And then we have the graphic designers. So from there, we move forward, chief graphic designers. Uh, we don't use that in, in Malaysia, actually. But in US... Creative think, director. Yeah. So actually, creative, di uh, creative director, there's actually another one level more to go, you know? Yes. So we call this the senior graphic designers, or we call the designer department head. All right, so they are not the uh, creative or art director yet, mm. All right? Uh, and then, you know, it moves forward, it goes to the art director, it goes to the new media producer. These people are the one who really, uh, the, the one who own uh, Media Prima, Astro. These are the people who actually starts as a graphic artist, actually. Yes. Mm. I aspire to be that then one day. <laughs> 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 Just say okay. So, what about uh, multimedia design, Mr. Devagi? Um, you're on mute, Mr. Devagi. Ah, okay. okay, the career options are uh, that uh, we uh, you can have uh, with the multimedia design. Okay, um, mm -hmm. basically, multimedia design graduates can uh, seek employment opportunity opportunities from a, a wide range of creative industries such as advertising. Uh, publishing and broadcasting you see i'm saying uh, we are still linking to the um, um, graphic design and uh, mass comp okay as i have mentioned uh, they can have wide range of industries such as advertising publishing and broadcasting and as well as uh, other major disciplines including business and uh, project management programming testing and support Okay, I will just tell you uh, some of the uh, multimedia design related careers that you can actually seek upon graduating. Um, the first one will be, uh, can be 3D illustrator, okay, can be 3D modeler, can be 3D animator, 
or you can be a game artist or a game designer and uh, from from uh, i mean if you have studied already studied the multimedia does not does not mean that you have to stick to the multimedia design you can also contribute yourself to the graphic design as well see how graphic design and multimedia design are interrelated okay let's let me talk about the relation between um, multimedia design and the mass comp okay those who have already uh, graduated from multimedia design they can actually uh, uh, look for their pathway into their journalism for an example be a content writer why not you know, who is blocking you you can it's all um up to your capabilities and uh, skills right you can be the multimedia designer can be the video editor as well uh, a web designer producers creative directors uh, sound engineers and interactive programmers oh i i have a full load of list i can't tell all the um, uh, career prospects right okay so and um, i just would like to emphasize that uh, what skills do you need for a multimedia design course you know uh, in fact you don't have to worry because uh, if you have to master some uh, some skills such as creative and technical skills uh, team working skills uh, critical uh, critical thinking skills or ability to handle tight deadlines all this you don't have to worry because when you uh, take a multimedia design course with us okay come and join us and uh, you will certainly i have other guarantee you you will certainly equip you uh, with the required skills to prepare you to face the challenges and demands of the program okay we will uh, train you to face the challenges within our college premise and you will be, you will be able to the, uh, you will be able to adapt the same skills when you enter uh, uh, the the working industry okay i, I we, we have produced um, uh, our graduates we have graduates we who have opened up a, his own uh, wedding planner agency oh, okay yes. he is very good with uh, videography very good with uh, photography and he's ex absolutely um uh, marvelous in his graphic design and we have uh, yeah and uh, i would like to share one of the experience i have a student who have went for an internship or an industrial training course and uh, uh, without i realize uh, i mean uh, she has actually didn't tell me where is actually where she has actually joined for the internship and uh, when i was following up with her i got to know that uh, she has actually joined a company which is actually working with augmented reality uh, i'll give you one um, example uh, she is actually um, helping with the coding augmented reality and virtual reality coding process uh, whereby they are creating an app uh, you can actually stand in front of a kiosk it's considered a kiosk app and you have to stand uh, right in front of the kiosk app kiosk app and you are able to uh, see your uh, your virtual attires your virtual clothes you can you can choose you can choose your uh, favorite tops you can choose your favorite uh, bottoms and you can look um you can see the uh, how 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 would you uh, look with those attires that will that would be so amazing you know you you save you all the mess that you actually do in the morning you know do you have anybody have those kind of dilemma when you want to go out somewhere and you do not know what to wear and you ended up trying everything at the end of the oh, day you have goodness. a mountain of clothes on the bed <laughs> and you will create a mess yes exactly <laughs> and I, I would say this is applicable for the ladies especially yes Yes, yes, yes. That's why I, I'm relating to to it so much right now. This will make my life so much easier. I think imagine it for Miss Molly and Miss Devagi. I think you have millions of saris inside your wardrobe. So isn't that easier to just swipe like, okay, this sari, okay, does it look nice on this occasion? Rather than I have to tie it every time to see, okay, whether it looks good or not, I take out again, then tie again, okay, look good or not. <laughs> true, very true. Yeah, that will be so much easier, isn't it? <laughs> I, I would like to have that button one day. Just click on that button and I'm like in the attire I want. <laughs> it's so much easier. Okay, so I have one question. Since that, uh, we want to um, really, really address the issue of stereotypes. I think this is the question that has been asked many times to me during education fair. Like when I come, uh, counsel students, they ask me, do I need to be very good in drawing? to study multimedia design and graphic design see our both lecturers all our lecturers are laughing and smiling because they get asked the question all the time all right i think i i would like to answer the question all right because 
maybe may uh, mainly because I'm teaching history of art and history of graphic design. One thing um, a lot of people should understand: if you can't write, then you can't draw, because the first existence of drawing is actually your own writing. So uh, it's basically you already know drawing since the uh, the age that you know how to write alphabets, you know. So that's how uh, drawing is all about, basically. It's not necessarily you have to be, uh, you know, Da Vinci or Michelangelo, you know, or uh, uh, even Pablo Picasso, if you look at his paintings. I, I was just about to say that he's like slobbing everything on for certain yeah. <laughs> yeah. And his art. Yes. And so yeah, it's a very expensive art. All right. <laughs> and then, so basically, if you know how to write, that means you know how to draw. So it's simple as that. Because so they don't have to draw like Degas and that they can be amazing artists, right? No, right? Oh, no. no. <laughs> if they I need a Degas, I would die. <laughs> it's about in, in, individualistic. You know. The identity comes from yourself, you know. So we are responsible to actually reveal their identity, reveal their indivi uh, individuality, you know, their creativity. So that's why in Segi KL we've been doing all this while. We actually look at the student's talent from within, not, not through how we carve the student. Basically, we actually, how do you know uh, it's a diamond when you, you know, you polish it? polish it, yes. You know, a diamond has to go through a series of processing and high intense heat and pressure. Then only a small little diamond is being produced, you know, such a big hole and it goes through so much pressure, only it becomes a diamond. Exactly. And That's the so chemistry expensive. behind it. Yes, it's expensive yeah. and it's delicate and it's wonderful. How yeah. do we know all this? Right, how do we know all this? It was so weird. So another myth I would like to uh, address is that they always said that students who fail uh, to enter science stream or fail to enter um, accounting stream in the past or in high school, they should just go ahead and study graphic design, mass comm and all that kind of thing. Right, correct, and our lecturers, I think a lot of them have, uh, a lot of this kind of myth has been coming to you, you know, a lot of uh, this kind of uh, information has come to your ears. And I would like to say, it's not true from personal experience. I personally took science stream, pure science. You can see Mr. Tujan just uh, many times he have um, actually used scientific examples. Amoeba, it's actually a cell. Do you realize that? That's a science, science student. <laughs> former science student. I myself am also a former science student and my degree is in communications and marketing. You see the unrelatability of that? <laughs> To be an engineer. <laughs> right. So, Miss Miss Molly, Miss Devagi, Mr. Tujan, is that a myth? Is a yes. Myth. Uh, to Eileen, Eileen, to tell yes. the truth, uh, uh, I am from IT and uh, computer science background. See. And uh, I have a flair in creativity. You see, I have flair in creating things using the software. Okay. So you should have a creativity. And um, if you are one who is constantly uh, drawing, doodling, or uh, sketching whenever you get your hands on the blank surface, uh, why not turn your uh, hobby into your fulfilling career? Yes. No, exactly. why not? There's no harm, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. Very true. Miss Molly, is that correct? Right. And then there's another myth, you know. They said if you don't like math, join mass communication. <laughs> yes. Right? <laughs> yes. and more, they say yes. that if you talk too much, then you should join mass communication. That's true. Uh, <laughs> you know why I know this? Because everybody has been telling me that since form five. I'm like, that's not true. That's not true. I have uh, friends who don't talk a lot, but they are in uh, communication studies. Correct or miss? I think you have right. a lot of students who don't talk in class as well. <laughs> yes. They are behind the camera, actually. They are suitable yeah. to, yeah, for a content writer and so on. Mm. That's why. <laughs> See, all Everyone. the myths, yes, all the myths has been put aside and has been addressed. So, guys, if you have any questions that pertaining different type of myth, uh, myths or you do not know what to do right after SPM and you do not know your career pathway, 
please leave it down in the comment section down below. So let's move on and give our deputy principal some questions. You know, he is the best person to give you the best answers. Correct or not? Mr. David, Mr. Tujo, Mr. Devagi, Mr. Molly, he's the best person to answer all these questions. And he will be introducing to you guys some scholarships that we have during this MCO at the same time and what kind of different scholarship that Segi College Kuala Lumpur will be able to offer you if you come join us in our diploma programs, whereas being taught by Mr. Tujo, Mr. Devagi or Ms. Molly um, themselves. All right, so Mr. Tang, would you like to have the floor? Okay, thanks. I think I would like to have the mic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yep. There are a few types of uh, scholarships available in Segi College Kuala Lumpur, which you, you can uh, actually apply, right? I'm sure you're interested. Uh, one of them is the High Achiever Scholarship for those uh, who have uh, done well in the SPM, in STPM, in uh, UEC, O level, A level, whatever. You know what I mean, not, right? Okay. So you can uh, apply for our scholarship, number one. Uh, number two is our principal scholarship, in which uh, the principals have the discretion to give a scholarship. For example, for those who are uh, students with uh, some, some form of disability, they can apply for principal scholarship. Thirdly, we have a sports scholarship. Um, these are for those uh, sports men and women, right? Who have excelled in sports and uh, yet at the same time they would like to uh, pursue their studies, right? So we can give them a we give them sports scholarship. Um, in fact, uh, currently we have uh, two students in our hospitality in our hospitality program who and has uh, computer science. In computer science, oh sorry, yes, okay. yes, Both computer science. Right? Right? We have. Uh, we have who we have given the sports scholarship and they are part of our rhythmic gymnastic team who won the gold medal correct i think they won yes. the gold medal in the, the recent sea games right. so we are very proud of them and uh, we're giving them sports scholarship and um yeah in fact we have another famous sportsman uh what's his name uh mamado okay who is uh, our in our national football team also uh, okay, uh, so uh, sports scholarship is also available, and uh, for those who are severely affected financially, right, uh, during MC, what solutions are available? Uh, we are very happy to introduce this scheme known as a zero first six scheme. Now, what is the meaning of zero first six schemes? Right, it means that we can enjoy zero payment, you can enjoy zero payment for the first six months of your studies. Isn't that great, right? And uh, we are the only private institution, institution right, who is uh, yes. offering this scheme. Yes. Okay, so don't miss out. Don't miss out on this. Uh, you can uh, email us in our Segi website or WhatsApp us at the bottom of your screen. There's a number there, right, to find out more details. Yes, find out more details <laughs> on uh, this uh, zero for six scheme. Okay. Right, thanks. Back to you, uh, Ayin. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tang. All right. So besides this, we have scholarships. We have such amazing programs. But I think our students would like to know whether we have this. The most important one at all. At my site in digital, um, my digital and my social medias, I've get I've gotten a lot of questions from students asking this. Does Segi have flexibility of study options? Mr. David, Mr. Ta, you guys are the pros in this. I leave it up to you guys. <laughs> okay. Uh, in um, in Segi, we have this thing known as the Segi Evening School, right? Uh, which can also apply to join. This is uh, especially for those uh, working adults um, who may want to come for classes, uh, right? Uh, they, uh, they are not available during the daytime, during the weekdays, but they would like to have classes in the evening or at the weekends, right? So we have this Segi Evening School that is available for them, okay? In which they have opportunity to, uh, you can have opportunity to upgrade yourself or upskill yourself whether it is a diploma program or a degree program or even some short courses, right, to uh, to uh, upskill yourself, to find out more, right, gain more knowledge, 
you can uh, join our SEGI evening school. Okay, uh, so yeah, this is available to you to uh, Mr. David. Anything you'd like to add to that? Uh, Mr. David, I think you have to unmute. You have to unmute, you have to unmute us. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, well, I think uh, ultimately the setting of this school, the, the purpose is to you know to to give opportunity uh, to provide the opportunity for the uh, those who are working, uh, adult learner who are working uh, to reskill themselves. Uh. I'm sure they have uh, acquired some uh, skills uh, during their you know their their studies. Uh, so we want to give this opportunity to the to this, this uh, you know group of uh, uh, adult learner to to reskill themselves. At the same time, uh, you know to upskill as well those uh, you know if they do not uh, have the necessary skills that uh, is needed in their in their you know when uh, at, at their place of uh, work. Um, you know we want to upskill them as well. So we. So uh, having that in mind, we actually, um, you know, uh, develop a lot of um, Short courses? Many, many courses here, yeah? many courses uh, uh, from academic programs, uh, academic courses to, to uh, short courses, uh, you know, that actually offer between one to five days, uh, that kind of thing. So um, I just want to give an example like uh, for uh, graphic design and uh, multimedia design, or even mass comm. Uh, some of some of, some of the courses, for example, are uh, uh, like for fundamental pho photography, uh, documentary, and photojournalism. Um, th these are some of the courses. And also, you know, we actually collaborate. Like what I mentioned earlier, uh, we collaborate with the industry people, right, to to offer short uh, uh, skills courses as well. Uh, for example. Right, um, we are now in the midst of collaborating with the KRU Academy and the, and the Yayasan uh, KRU. Uh, I'm not sure whether you have heard of this, this uh, band, this group, uh, KRU. Yes, uh, I, uh, I'm sure it's, it's very popular those days. Uh, I think now as well. Um, to you know, to, to offer this uh, certificate, professional certificate in 3D animation, for example, and also professional certificate in. Uh, uh, social media management and video editing. So these these are some of the courses that is relevant uh, to the industry right now. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, if you have these skills, well, probably you may, may want to work with uh, KRU, KRU, you know, with them. So these these are uh, some of the initiatives that we have put in uh, uh, for this uh, evening schools. So. Um, so so uh, um, we want to make sure again, again, ultimate uh, goal is to make sure that uh, you know our students uh, are industry ready. Yes, that I totally agree. So why not we show a little bit about what our multimedia design students have been done? This is a multimedia design virtual classes during MCO. Right. Let's see. Okay, sorry. Okay, so let's see. So I think our students have also come up with art competitions. What is this all about? Uh, Miss Molly, Miss Devagi, Mr. Tujan? 
um, this project is organized by Miss Nisa. Mm, okay. Uh, yes. Uh, I think uh, when I was a student uh, here at Segi as well, I was in the visual arts class. Uh, during that time, our visual arts class was full, was really, really full. Because why I do know this? Because we have to split our classes into two. And one of the classes is being taught by Mr. Tujan as well. So Ms. Nessa and Ms. Mr. Tujan was teaching the same class coherently. And I was in Ms. Nessa's class. And at the end of our semester of the class, we have this exhibition and it's a competition as well. And it was really fun. Um, it not only helped us interact with each other, but we, we are able to realize that certain people have this kind of art skill. You wouldn't think that a communications or a psychology student would um, be very creatively inclined, right? They will not create beautiful artworks. I think Miss Molly, you remember who's Sealand? You remember his picture of this uh, portrait of the guy? Yeah, correct. Right. And also Very Frank. Good. Right. Frank, and yeah. also Frank. We never realized mm -hmm. that these two people can actually come out with such a wonderful artwork. We were amazed. Right. We, we see all these talents uh, being given out. So everybody has a creative spirit in them. But it's just that how we catch it. Am I right, Mr. Tujan, Mr. Vagi, Ms. Molly? Okay. You know, I think I think uh, you know creativity is is very important. It's, it's actually the you know one of the top ten uh, skills uh, or one of the top three skills uh, you know in twenty twenty that all of us uh, need to have. Uh, you know, if, if you have you uh, if you are creative, you can you can do wonders, uh, no matter what uh, you know uh, courses that you are in, uh, you can do wonders. As you can see this as well, uh, this one, Mr. Tujan or Ms. Ms. Molly? Uh, Ms. Nisa's project. Ah, okay. So I think this is wonderful as well. The mural painting is for a school, is it? It's for our high school? Yes, yes true. Ah, this is wonderful. You see, our students don't just work individually. Creative arts and uh, design students don't just work individually, but they have to work together as well to create wonderful artworks. I don't think uh, Rome was built by just one person and <laughs> created just by one person. Uh, what's that cathedral again? There's a Notre Dame. Notre Dame is not created by just one artist for the uh, wonderful angels painting, right? The angels and demons painting and all. It's not just created by one person. It takes hundreds of people to create a piece of art. So from here onwards, you can see that creative art and design is not just individual thing, but it's also teaching you how to uh, work in a team, correct? My dear lecturers. Yes, yes. You know, this, uh, this, yeah, yeah, I agree with uh, Eileen. Uh, you know, it's, it takes a uh, teamwork, you know, to to complete all this uh, mural. And uh, you know, this mural it takes about uh, how many days? Two weeks, I think. You know, I'm mistaken, right? Two weeks to complete it. So, uh, but they persevere on, you know, these students. And uh, it, it, and uh, apart from uh, perseverance, it needs to have a lot of uh, planning to do. You know, planning, uh, creativity, and 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 uh, you know. Uh, you know, doing the, uh, the design. Yes. All right. So thank you. And now we move on. Uh, we have already seen how classes are being conducted in MassCom and in uh, multimedia design. Why not we see what Mr. Tujan's um, classes have is going about? Situation. Mr. Tujan, would you like to add something? You're on mute. <laughs> I got panicked so suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> I realized that you're on mute. 
actually, to tell you the truth, uh, there is this one uh, one soul who's invisible uh, within us at the moment. She's not around. She's not with us. Uh, it's actually Miss Nesa's class. Uh, oh, okay. To be honest, uh, yeah. Uh, mine is actually even uh, mine is more to e-learning, and hers is more to traditional. She's is uh, she's the one who's actually who conducted the students for the mural art. You know, so basically, those are all her guidance, basically. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we have Miss Nessa to thank. Um, she, like I said before, she was my visual arts lecturer as well. <laughs> it is really weird. Okay, so you guys can see this, right? Okay, I'm studying communications, but I'm also studying visual arts. The relatability okay. of it. You're vibrant. Yeah, it's like everything is correlated. Segi is already um, preparing you to be the best. You know, they're just not prepare. They're not just preparing you to be uh, able to communicate well. They're not just preparing you to be uh, creatively inclined. They're they're teaching you how to become an entrepreneur at the same time. You know, there are certain things that think the opportunities are endless. Like a lot of people might think, you know. Education is the very traditional way of teachers, high school teachers do it, spoon feeding. Okay? I give you this, you memorize this, and you just do this, and you will pass it no matter what. For me personally, in my opinion, if you ask me, I do not believe in that, and I don't recommend anybody to incorporate spoon feeding learning into their life because you will not learn anything. Without your lecturers, without your academicians, you are just lost i would say you will just you will just be lost you know being able to come up with creative ideas yourself being a, a person who knows to find ways to um understand concepts differently that is the best way you know you learn yourself you can ask your lecturers a question that is so out of the box if it mind boggles your lecturer they are happy why because they know that you are genuinely interested in their topic because you think of it you apply it in a different way I think our lecturers really, really do not like to see the final exam answers are their examples. They really hate that. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, they really hate that if their students answer like, oh, this is the example I gave in class. Why can't they just apply it in another way? You know, they're not angry because you, uh, you actually remember their class. They are actually angry at themselves whether they have taught you enough to let you um, understand the concept until the fact that you can create your own examples. You can take that concept and apply it in your own way. That is their ultimate goal. That is the ultimate goal of our lecturers, you know. We are not just there to stand there and teach you and then if you learn anything or do not learn anything, you go back, that's it. No, we will evaluate ourselves. The lecturers will evaluate themselves and then they will change their lesson plans accordingly. They'll be like, okay, this semester, uh, it seems like the percentage of students did not really understand what is going on. So, next semester I'm going to change it or the next time I'm going to evaluate my students even more so that they understand, they really understand what am I trying to tell them. Am I am I correct, my dear very, lecturers? Very true. Very true. Yeah. true, true. Absolutely true. Yeah. So you can see how dedicated our academic staffs are and also our non-academic staffs are here to help you. No matter what, we are here to help you and we are here to assist you in anything that you are facing, especially during MCO. Our students um, who are currently back home, thankfully we have sent them all back home. Our hostel students are all back home. You know, they are fine and well. And then some of them who are facing maybe some difficulties or having some issues, they are talking to our counsellors. We have our students affairs department who is always there ready to help them and also our academic staffs are actually um, having this um, ac this group. I think, is it a group, Mr. Tao, that is called Pastoral Care? I think, Mr. Tujin, you're one of them in there as well to help students, assist students as well. Yeah. To, the caring uh, leaders, yeah. Yes, exactly. So uh, you, the, our lecturers are there. You know, this is not in their job scope. This is not a requirement. But this is to show that lecturers really care. They volunteer themselves, you know. It's not like the college force, like these lecturers, okay, um, Mr. Tujan, I want you to do this. No, they did not. The college did not force you, correct, Mr. Tujan? I think this is out of your own heart and you really want students to uh, feel the love and care from yourself. Yeah, I always uh, remember what my mom says. Uh, don't treat the students like some other person's children. Treat them like your own children. So I always keep that in my mind. Yeah. yeah. 
That's very good. You know, I always joke with um, some of the lecturers saying that, oh, your children are graduating. You have so many children under your arms, you know. Especially those uh, those lecturers who are not married yet or they uh, have not have a kid yet. I say that they are already mothers. They are already fathers because they have so many students under them. <laughs> right? It's like every, like every time I think you guys will feel a little bit like uh, tearing up a little bit or be a bit sad and happy at the same time. Happy tears when you see some of your students graduate. You watch them grow from the very first day up to the very last day and finally they're wearing that square hat, their motorboard and walking down and coming to you and say, uh, thank you, miss. Thank you, sir. Thank you for uh, teaching me so much. I finally graduated. I'm so happy. You take pictures. For sure, you'll feel the sense of overwhelmness. Am I right? So, it's a journey. It's a wonderful, wonderful journey. So um, I think we have gone on for a very long time. And I would like to wrap it up. If there's anything else from the floor. Anything uh, else? I just want to uh, thank the School of uh, Communication and Design for uh, uh, sharing uh, um, uh, their thoughts here over in this uh, virtual open day. Uh, I think you can really see uh, how passionate they are about their, their, what, what they are teaching. And uh, <clears throat> I have a tagline for the lecturers in uh, Segi College. Uh, I call them what? proud Segits. Proud Segits. <laughs> right, because they are so proud of their work and they are proud of the graduates they produce. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> thank you very much uh, for all your hard work. Uh, not just this team, but those like Miss Nessa is not here. Please uh, send my uh, regards to her so and to our head, uh, uh, Ms. David Fu, for doing a good job. And Miss Eileen, of course, our graduate, we are so very proud of you as being our graduate. And now you are uh, showing off your you know, your skills <laughs> as a proud Segi uh, graduate. I, I, have and, uh, I have my lecturer to thank. She's down here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank her, definitely. Okay, and also to thank all of you for taking time, precious time is one and a half hours. Wow, I'm really yes. so uh, <laughs> so glad you can uh, you know join us for such a long, long time. time. Yes. Uh, say, uh, taking so much of your time. So thank you, thank you so much, and please stay safe and healthy always. Right. Thank you yes. so much. Thank you, Mr. Tang. I think um, everybody knows that uh, these days we cannot shake hands. Obviously, we have to say thank you this way. So thank you, everybody, for coming on to our stream and joining us for this one and a half hours. And thank you so much, Mr. David, Mr. Tujan, Mr. Devagi, and Ms. Molly for coming up uh, today on our live stream and taking so much of your time, especially this time is very precious for you. I know you, you need your rest. At the same time, you need this time to answer to your students. I, I, I think I can understand that maybe your students might be buzzing you right now. Miss, where are you, sir? Where are you answering me right now? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay, I'm so sorry, dear students. If I'm taking up your lecturer's time, please forgive me. All right, and I I like to wrap things up for now. All right, thank you so much, everybody, for joining our virtual open day for the School of um, Communications, Creative Arts, and Design today. And I hope you guys have learned a lot of things. If you still have a lot of questions and you have uh, you didn't have the opportunity to ask us please um, WhatsApp us or even go to our social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and on TikTok as well. So please uh, follow us and also share this live. This live will be saved on our social media. You can re-watch it and maybe gain some information from it as well. But if you say, uh, if you would like to talk to our lecturers, maybe you can say that, oh, I find that uh, Miss Molly is really nice and I really like to know more about maths communication and you would like to talk to her, just drop a message to our social media Whereas uh, Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok saying that I would like to talk to your mass communication lecturer, Miss Molly, please. Um, then we will direct you to her and she'll be able to answer you and maybe she'll be able to explain more about the courses and subjects that you'll be learning in Diploma in Mass Communications. So thank you, everybody. So don't forget that we have another virtual open day session next week, same time, same date. All right. So I'm not really same date but on every tuesday and wednesday we'll be um featuring our school of allied health science and also my very proud school the american degree program school all right so if you would like to know more about uh, allied health science and also american degree program please stay tuned to next week as well and i thank you guys for coming in please stay safe and stay healthy and we'll say goodbye to our academic staff so sorry at this side bye everybody I say bye to our stream, please. Bye. Bye.
Okay. All right. Okay. So thank you everybody once again for joining our stream and our virtual open day for today. So I'm going to sign off and hope you guys have a wonderful day ahead and have a wonderful weekend. The weekend is near. It's a um, hump day. So don't worry. It's another two more days to your weekend. I hope you guys stay safe and stay healthy throughout this CMCO. And I'll see you guys next week in our live session. Bye, guys. <laughs>